Welcome back to another exciting episode of the B29 restoration project. So as you can see, because you can't miss it, the uh, the B29 fuselage is here inside the, the basement shop, garage shop, whatever you want to call it, and it pretty much just fits. The, the nose of the airplane, which is currently missing the, the queer canopy portion, is pretty much touching the garage door and there's just enough space here in the back to to suck your gut in and walk around uh, some things you can see that are probably different from the very short video I did I have cut the horizontal stabilizers off after bringing this thing inside I have realized that with my current storage and transport situation having the horizontal stabs on it permanently while convenient kind of adds a little bit of a, a hassle to it especially with the transport and the storage aspect so i had a my buddy gunny from aviation concepts he came over yesterday we did some brainstorming for a couple of hours and chopped off the horizontal stabs we got a pretty good idea and a pretty good method of getting those set up to where they'll be removable also want to shout out to my buddy ben down at extreme flight he uh he put in some good good thought processes in there as well for accomplishing the same thing so the first few videos is really going to be looking at making permanent stabs removable uh, this is significantly easier on a foam core airplane like this just because you don't have to you don't have to worry too much about losing the shape and trying to peel balsa wood sheeting off of like a built-up structure where the where it's likely going to damage the, the ribs just as much as it will the sheeting. So, my dog is apparently awake now. So, uh, pretty much what we did is here we have the horizontal stabilizer that was good. And you can see right here at this juncture right here, that's where the corner of the elevator is. I decided that that's probably the best place to cut it due to the fact that if you tried to cut it inboard of this portion here to get another anti-rotation pin or whatever in here you're only going to have an inch or two of material and knowing me and handling and getting distracted or whatever talking to somebody i could see this portion getting broken off so i elected to just cut it straight across from the inboard edge of the, ele the elevator and make life a little really easily or a lot easier and the fact that you just don't have to worry about that getting broken off. So basically just took a ruler, butted it up against this edge, and drew a line across the top of it, again along the bottom, and then we used a flexible ruler to make the cut around the front here, or to make the line around the front. Then going very slowly with the zona saw, we just put it right here up against this edge, and I started cutting through until I had a nice long shallow cut and then i just continued this cut all the way across the front through the, a little bit of these plywood spars until i got about that far and about the quarter of the way through the leading edge and then i repeated the process again along the bottom doing a nice shallow cut all the way from the trailing edge to the leading edge till about a quarter of the way through the bottom of the, the leading edge and then stopped from there and then we got a pool saw as they're called these are spineless they're very flexible this one has the the plastic guard on it but it, it you can see how it flexes and then using this saw we use these cuts that we had made with the zona saw to just very slowly work our way from the trailing edge to the leading edge to remove the horizontal stab now that those are both cut the foam side was a little, a little bit harder because the foam wants to cut easier than like the portions of the the, the trailing edge and the, the plywood original spars so that you had to be a little bit more careful about so now that we've got the center of the split figured out we got to cut a quarter of an inch off of either side of that split line from here at the root and here at this root as well and this is to allow for a piece of quarter inch plywood a quarter inch light ply that i have cut as the ribs to be capped here and those are laser cut these are just blanks for it you can see i've already got the holes in there for the 
the stab rip or the stab tubes. The stab tubes are actually to go here and here, so they'll tie into, or they'll have a glue joint that ties them into the original ply spars here. And then we'll put this here, and then we'll just adjust the incidents. We'll kind of tack these, tack glue these in place, and then we'll bore our holes for the tube sockets. For tubes, I'm going to be using some three quarter inch carbon fiber tubes. These are from Gator RC. They come with a sleeve. They're about a millimeter or two thick. And they're about 36 inches long, so it'll be one full length 36 inch tube here on the, the trailing edge portion. And then I'll probably do another full length tube at the, the, the forward edge. And then here at the very front for retaining, I'm probably gonna have a, a hardwood dowel that goes this way, and then a another hardwood dowel this way that gets drilled for the dowels to intersect, and then a, a bolt to hold it in, or it may be hardwood dowel and carbon, or I may even do a, a G10 tab that goes into a plywood pocket with a bolt that goes through. Kind of still on the fence about that. Uh, here on the stab that we removed, you can kind of see a, a very lightly drawn out method. You'll have a wing tube, that runs about here. You'll have a slot that we will cut eventually where a plywood rib will get placed in here. And then the other two will be here and this plywood rib will support the outboard ends of the, of the stab tubes. And then the slot that we cut out will actually remove sheeting from probably, probably third, two thirds span, half two thirds span, somewhere around that. We'll go all the way down here to the root and then we'll do a little bit less than that. We'll probably do like third or quarter span, just enough to, to go about two or three inches on the outside edge of this, this slot. And then we'll again, carry that all the way to the root section. And then we get to basically rinse and repeat that whole process and sheet this unfinished foam core for the right stab. I do have a set of stab shucks uh, the foam shucks that are the remnants of cutting out these airfoils, I have one and a half sets. So when I get ready to sh uh, sheet these, I will do a video specifically on just sheeting foam core stuff using a vacuum pump, or if you don't have a vac vacuum pump, you really, you can do it without it. So that'll be a, a video we'll save for, kind of for itself. Once we kind of get all of that figured out and finished up, I will likely fix the cracks that are along the, the tail section. You can see right about here, there's a nice big crack there. It goes along here. Then of course there's this piece of balsa wood missing there. And then on the other side, there's another, the crack just kind of continues along. We'll get some sheeting on this area to reinforce it and fix that area, get it ready for glass. Of course, the whole airplane has got to be sanded down to remove all the paint and the tail section will be really pretty pretty quick and easy to get done on. I figure that's probably only going to take me about a week or so of a couple of days of work. Here on the left wing stub of the, the inboard wing stub, this is really where 75% of the work is. Everything else is just kind of easy peasy, just work work. This though, this is going to take a lot of, a lot of ingenuity in doing. Because you see pretty much the sheeting is all the way taken off to basically the, the wing and fuselage intersection. So from there all the way out here to the tip is gonna have to be done and replaced. The, the big headache with that is since we don't have wing shucks and it's attached to the airplane, you have to do it very methodically. You can't just remove all of it and then do one big sheet. Otherwise you're gonna probably end up bending a building a, a twist into the wing. There's also a hardwood spar that's about quarter by half that runs the full span of this it's broken here and it's likely broken on the bottom as well so that's going to have to get kind of spliced in somehow to create to re to reinforce that area that's now missing of course the whole nacelle structure is gone unfortunately the whole bottom of it is going to have to be rebuilt the other side while it's cracked is cracked pretty badly but i might be able to, to salvage the bottom of the other nacelle and obviously we got to do the tops of the nacelles so they match the outboard wings. And then the bottom sheeting is almost as bad, if not worse than the top. The other wing stub is actually reasonably in good shape. 
Um, there's cracks in the skin. Of course, the fiberglass is cracked as well. And it's got a, a, a stress fracture right here that runs forward of the wing leading edge on the opposite side. I believe there's one of the trailing edge as well that we'll have to kind of investigate once we get all the, the paint removed. So once all the structural stuff is done, figure probably well, it's probably a good a month's worth of work because of just how long it's going to be to take care of this stuff. Uh, once that's done, I'm going to look at making new tooling for the canopy area here. The nose portion, like I said, I've got a one or two new ones of that. So I can probably just use those that one to make the tooling and then this whole area up here, I'm just gonna just, I'm gonna carve a new piece of tooling for that. Uh, the hatches I've obviously got, they're floating around here somewhere. And then once all of that stuff is done, then we can really start getting into the, the whole painting and detailing and whatnot. I'm actually really looking forward to doing some detail work on this airplane. I think it would look phenomenal with rivets and substantially more panel lines and the idea I have for paint. If it turns out how I think it will, this thing will be amazing looking. And then the, 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 the cosmetics will definitely make it stand out more so than the size does, I think. But that's a long process and a long way from now. I'm going to cut this video off kind of short here just to give you give you all a, a good idea of the scope of the work involved in this. The wings went pretty quick. Hopefully this goes just as quick. Um, I don't expect it to, but hey, you never know. I'll, 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 take, I'll take some good luck every now and then. <laughs> so for now, y'all have a great day.